Hey everybody and welcome back. My name is Sue and I'm from OML Embroidery and over there on the computer is Dawn. Hello. Hello. Today we are going to be doing something really cute. Big, big, crazy clamshell. So big, big because this clamp, one clamshell fits into uh, my 8x8 hoop so it's as big as it can get and uh, crazy because there's crazy quilting in it and a lot of crazy space quilting <laughs> which is fun so we're going to be working on that today so let me say hello to everybody my favorite part leah lorelei misha hello misha watching tv on my canadian tv stand well that's always cool for sure for sure so Kathy, I saw up there, Anne Primard, hello, Karen Jordan, um, everyone, welcome. So this is a technique I think you guys are really going to enjoy doing because when you're done, your whole quilt top, top or wall hanging is done, which I think is really cool and it's easier than it looks. Um, but before we get started, I have everything ready here. Um Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. A uh, little update. Uh, these, these, these ones were released. Now, this one is in this uh, King Star Metallic Fall Quartet. So all the colors, the orange, um, the gold is here, which you can see quite nicely. Um, and then the purple and then the brown. So I used them all and that was the goal. However, if you don't have all the metallic thread, this is what it looks like with just regular thread. And I think it still looks good. So you get two sizes, by the way. And you can get these two designs for free when you check out the grandmother's garden. Now, I haven't done the backing and binding for obvious reasons. Nobody's going to knock me for that one. But I have ironed it, and uh, this is the size it's going to be. And I love it. I love it. It's hard to get the whole thing in. I will be taking pictures, though, once I get the rest of it on. But it's all together. It's all ironed. It's wonderful. I'm so happy with this. This is my, what would you say, my heart and soul went into this one. Uh, yeah. 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 You spent a good amount of time. <laughs> a, a, lot, a long time. Developing that. Yeah. <laughs> the hard part was getting the right sizes because on these old hand quilts, they're one inch and making everything fit properly and then flow properly. Now on the website, if you go and look, there's more than one way of putting this together. So you can do, let's turn it this way so you can see the top, hopefully a little bit better. Yeah, that's pretty good. So adding block number two on the top allows you to have the patterns the pathways, sorry. It's a little bit different than traditional, but it still goes around the flower, which I think is pretty cool, actually. So it goes around the flower, and then you can walk along the pathways. That's what Grandmother's Garden kind of was all about. So you could also make a whole quilt with just the pathways, which I think is really cool just block one and block two and it's just going to make these diamond shapes all the way down if you didn't want to make pathways and you just wanted to make the flowers you can do that too and what you do is you get a yellow pathway kind of down and then the green one will uh go straight down so it still looks cool so three ways um, and you can figure out which way you like best. And I'm not sure. I think it's between just the flowers, because I really like the flowers being the focal point, but also the pathway. I think that would look awesome. You can use any colors that you want. Uh, traditionally, the center of the flowers are all the same color, and then a solid color, and then uh, printed 
and then you start with your garden path. So, um, can you use charm squares to do it? Charm squares, uh, well, I'd have to measure this way on the, yeah. It, mm, you might be better off to use layer cakes for like the flowers might fit better layer cake and maybe this will fit into a charm square depending on how you're doing it if you are pre-cutting your stuff then you have a whole bucket of pre-cut stuff like i did and you just pick from it and it was fun actually once you got the hang of placement it was super fun kind of like putting a puzzle together kind of like yeah. putting a puzzle and it's not hard you take one it does the the placement you put it on there, you make sure it's okay, and after a while, you get used to it, you know, a little bit better on it, then it's going to do the blanket stitches, and then you move on to the next one. And I found it quite enjoyable. No trimming, you don't have to move the hoop, you don't have to do anything. But both are enclosed, uh, included, rather, with the design. So you get the this is 8 by 12 and 8 by 8 bigger size and you get the pre-cut and you get the applique and then I made a smaller one um, 5 by 5 and you get the flower blocks and block twos so just applique so uh, it's a lot of fun I'm gonna keep working on this um, and I am gonna I'm going to kind of come up with some different flower ideas, too, because I'm thinking poinsettias for the flowers. Different. Uh, there's white poinsettias. There's pink ones. There are tons of them. So when you buy this from OMLEmbroidery.com, um, then you get the pumpkin, the lacy pumpkin for free. It's the second download. And yes, this is a time saver. Now, back in the old days, they used to do this and sew it together by hand and do the quilting by hand. So every time I laid down a square, I thought of my great aunt and my grandma sitting there for hours and hours, not watching TV because I didn't have TV, um, sitting there doing these stitching. The other thing that was a happy accident that I love I have a really nice iron and it has a lot of steam and it added the wrinkles in, which is, uh, it wasn't that way before. Uh, I love it. So the wrinkles here that I'm talking about, the old it gives it, if you look at an old quilt, you know, from the 1920s or thirties, this is what it looks like. And I was so happy. Don kind of looked at me and said, you're happy for wrinkles? I said, yeah, I am, I am. So don't try to get those out. It makes it, uh, it makes it look more realistic. So this quilt has the wow factor. People will look at it and think you did it all by hand and that it took you forever. And in reality, it won't. It won't. You'll love it. So yeah, give it a try. We will be doing videos and uh, I've got a couple videos. I recorded it. I don't have them out yet, but I will. And we'll get working on that too. So back to today's business, the new technique. I'm so excited. Uh, big, big, crazy clamshells. Um, this is one of the things I've wanted to do. I actually have one more big, big, crazy clamshells but they are log cabins. They're bigger and they have log cabin designs inside them and they look awesome. I'm just saying. So I'll be releasing that at some point, but I want everyone to get used to doing this one. So in my quilt plan, these are the top and then I did, it's a half on one row across and then I threw in some of the crazy quilting and if I wanted to end it here you would do there's half half just the top half and that would make the bottom so figure out your whole design what you're going to do I have no idea I do know there's a space right there for me 
and that's what we're going to put in next so and it's easier than you think you guys will really like how it comes together it's um it's really easy to do and kind of fun kind of fun so okay let's go to the machine don we've got a little bit of trimming to do now on the machine i have the burgundy thread that i'm using i have my batting and we're just gonna stitch that down now you can stitch it down together with your fabric but i want a really nice clean cut for this so this is why i'm gonna do it this way you just keep adding clamshells even if you think you're done you can just keep adding either way I didn't look. I didn't even look. They're in the house. I'm I'm glad I'll look when I take it off. Thank you, Bob and Police, as always. A little squeak. And no Bob and Chicken today. Back to the desk. So isn't that cool? Big clamshells. No more small clamshells. We're doing big clamshells. Now I do need my tape there. And what I want to do is I want to, as carefully as I can, cut as close to the line as I can, because we want these to match up really well. The, so take your time. What? The top part one you only use for the top row? The top part, the little bikini underwear? Yeah. Yep. It's only on the top doesn't go anywhere else and that is why there's no satin stitches on it because they get their satin stitches so yeah good point it is all the instructions I spent a long time um, you know lots of pictures and drawings and do this and don't do this so it should be very helpful also with the uh, grandmother's garden i spent an entire day on the instructions so i feel that they're pretty good um even down to tricks to sew them together using five by seven hoop? eight by eight eight by eight hoop. yeah eight by eight and it fits in nicely and now i got my fabric so i just picked the fabric that goes along with everything and i like this so let's go back to the machine and the next step is stitching this down so we're going to stitch it down mm. what somebody is asking how much fabric you can use for the project depends on how big you want to go depends on how big you want to go so what i suggest in the instructions is you plan out what exactly what you want to do so if you're making a table runner how big how, and then you know how many um pieces you need if that makes any then sense you then you can figure out your fabric i mean you could just rough it out so the one eight inch uh clamshell is basically a layer cake oh. so that that's a little bit easier to maybe do the quilt math on it so what we're stitching now we're assuming that you've got your top part panties stitched out already yeah i always think they look like underwear yeah that's what i would say too can we go no. back yeah i put a picture up i can talk up. about it while i'm trimming what's the matter that you have to do the first row and you have to do the first row separately so you do one unhoop it trim it out do another for as many as you want then you have them handy and it's going to be you're going to stitch out this corner piece and attach it to this and then the next one you're going to stitch out this and attach it to this and to this Make sense? Does that make sense to you, Don? Yeah. And you just keep going. Once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy. And also, I mean, if you didn't want to have the, the little undie part, 
I don't know. It's a half clamshell, but it looks like underwear. If you didn't want it, then you could just have, you know, a kind of a scalloped edge, but there is a space in between. Lorelai says, no, that makes sense. She gets it. Okay. Yeah, so you explained it well. So make your quilt plan. Stitch out your half bottom, bottom half clamshells as many as you need leave them in a pile iron them it kind of helps and then you can start working on your blocks exactly how I'm doing it here so the edges the edges require half blocks either one way or another Yeah, no, fine. Once you get the hang of it, you guys, it's easy peasy. So this is my small table runner. So I decided I'm going to move my hoop if that's okay. I don't want to mess it up or confuse anyone with it. So I stitched out the bottom half parts. And I stitched three because I knew that's what it would, that's the width it would need. The next one I stitched was this half in the corner because we want a nice half edge. You can't leave it, you know, hanging out. And it was stitched, the satin stitches are on the half, and I stitched it together with this one. Then you take it out of the hoop, put new cutaway on your hoop and then stitch out this block and there'll be zigzag stitches and then the satin stitches so the zigzag stitches are get out of gel free if you haven't lined it up properly it's a lot easier to snip those out and then it does the satin stitches but also we're adding in another bottom so these get taped around and then you sew them and then you stitch out this one and you're going to be adding this this which is attached to all these and then go right to the end the next row so picture this is what you're going to have done the top two the next row you start with a full clamshell and you're going to put this and this part over it to stitch it together. So this is what we're doing here. So we did the same thing with this one. So now we are doing it right here at the end and I'm stitching out the clamshell and then we're going to attach it. Cool. Yeah. Misha's asking if you could um, make the top and bottom scalloped by not using yeah, that's what I said. You could, absolutely. Um, and frankly, you could do the sides too if you wanted. It would be kind of a weird scallop. The only thing is there's um, a space between, see this space here? But you could probably figure out something to do with it. Um, I think it will hold because you're going to be having zigzag and satin stitches through it. So it might just work. Mm -hmm. And all yeah. this is attached in the hoop. All of it is attached in the hoop. So I am going to do the quilting stitches and then we're going to get to the business of attaching. So do you guys have any more questions? I don't want you to be confused about it. Uh, I think once you see me attach this last part that you'll get your aha moment. So Lorelai says that makes sense now. Do you attach it in the hoop? Yes. Um, everything. Jill says well explained. Good. <coughs> and it's really, really, really cool to have your design finished and put together in the hoop. And then all you have to do is back it and bind it or whatever you're going to do. And I think that's awesome. It's just not working out that way. It's not working out that way. Um, no, you'll have to... I mean, you can. I didn't, and I didn't for the underwear top ones, but you could. I'm not really sure why I didn't. I was just in the 
I was just in the trim it really good mode. Can you do a split screen maybe? Because yeah. I am talking about them. Thank you, it makes sense. All right. <coughs> so you won't be not leaving any edge with a quarter inch. Yeah, I probably should have, but I didn't. And I figure I could um, not bind it, but just put the fabric over and then turn it. And then it's not going to matter quite as much. I was thinking anyways. What is the price? I think trying to keep uh, the majority of the stuff low. So I think it's uh, $9.99. Try to keep it as low as possible for you guys. It's more for you guys to learn the skills and learn the different things than, I mean, I have to keep a float over here, <laughs> but uh, we try to keep it, we want it available to everyone so you can learn this piecing in the hoop. That means you, Lynn, too. We can work on that, Lynn. So, yeah. Isabel, thank you very much. Woo! Jill, thank you very much, Jill. I hope you are going to try this out, Jill. Once you see the next steps, you guys will um, appreciate it a bit more. Now, I'm using, like, earthy colors, but I'm thinking you could design it into, you know, bright colors or rows of colors. So one row will be blue, one, you know, crayon colors sort of thing. Or you can design it by putting different, like, stripes this way, too. There's so many things you can do for it. So many. It's easy. So, on special right now from $20 down to $13. That's Canadian, I think. American, it should be 9 Yeah, I forget that we translate. I try to make, um, there's European, Canadian, and American. But yeah, on sale. On sale. So as low as I can possibly go, and that is for strictly for you guys, so you can learn and practice and, you know, that sort of thing. Hi everyone, on our way back from the market. I hope everything went well, Karina. I saw your stuff and it was awesome. Lorelei says excellent prices. Good. That's the goal. I, I really wanted to make sure they balanced more for people to make them attainable sort of thing. Makes a big difference to me. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Yeah, I like, uh, I like quilting stitches. A couple of them I created um... For the 5x5 five five sizes, will the 5-inch square packs work? It should work uh, delightfully, yeah. And that is a nice way to complete it. Do them in order. Off you go. If you don't want to do for a smaller one, if you don't want to do the quilting stitches, you can just skip it. Um, it's easy enough to do. Bigger ones, I, I wanted the quilting going on it, so... I just like the quilting. So this one I designed, and that one I did too. And the rest, oh, and I love, I love the crazy quilting. You could do the crazy quilting for every single one. You can make patterns out of it. You could use scrappy pieces. I mean, they're kind of long and skinny pieces, but yeah, it's awesome. So yeah, it's just a, a method so you can attach in the hoop. People have been doing it for years. And I wanted to incorporate it into quilts and especially curves. Has anyone ever tried to sew a curve? And I don't mean in the embroidery machine. <laughs> Sewing curves is kind of hard. I think I get a pass on it. So I like, you know, these ones. <laughs> These are crazy quilts. So it's folded fabric. The first one is an applique. And then 
the next step is a line and you put your fabric over it it's going to stitch it in a line and then flip it and it stitches down and you go to the next one the next one and there's a couple questions about your pumpkin my pumpkin can your pumpkin go on a towel yeah and yeah is there going to be a whole collection of pumpkins i think there might be because i like it okay back to the dust on this is where the fun starts so oh wait i gotta do one more step oops sorry not quite yet not quite i wanted i wanted to do this step so it's a zigzag stitch around it this one is really important um it's a zigzag stitch and it's just meant to hold everything flat so that'll be uh great davina jelly roll would be great for the crazy quilt block yeah absolutely absolutely you could definitely put a pattern backing and make it reversible fantastic idea misha you could the only thing you'd have to do is change the bobbin to match the top thread now basically on the one i did i've used one color of thread and i thought that was kind of fun too i sometimes like to challenge myself with that but i've used one color of thread throughout for the stitching it shows up everywhere i like the boldness of how it works there so yeah if you put um maybe just before the zigs uh no, I think you want, I think you want the, uh, quilting on it. So put it on there, top and bottom, quilt it, trim both sides. And then when you attach it, change your bobbin. I think it would be, uh, cool. Cool. So just about ready to do the fun part. And the first part is in orange, so that's a be careful color. It is now, anyways. So back to the dust, done. You got it? Yeah. Okay, so there's a couple of parts that you need to watch out for. And one of them is to make sure that this part at the bottom lines up. Let's look at this one. See how it lines up? It doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but we want it as close as we can. So I just kind of lay it down and see how we're looking, but it goes together pretty easily. I mean, that's not, that's not bad at all, really. So we want it, there can be a little overlap between the, the um, zigzag stitches but that has to go down just a little bit. You, you do want to take your time with the placement and yeah. everything, right? Yeah, it doesn't take too long to do. Um, but I start at one point, and tape is your friend for this one. And I'm going to tape the bottom there. And because I'm using the painter's tape, it really doesn't matter if you stitch over it. And then I'm going to move it so these two pieces are close together. And then we have to do a little bit of rearranging there. But see, I'm pushing down here so I can feel if there's a big lump, then that usually means it's, it's overlapping. So I'm just going to put tape across there just for bonus. Just for a bonus. So now... I kind of got it into the middle and I'm going to pull the whole thing off. Apparently <laughs> I want this end to match as well. So that's what I'm going for here. So it's not hard. It's not hard. Matched up, match up your zigzags, match up your bottom lines, tape it because we do not want it to move. And you know what? It just kind of falls into place like this. That is really, really well done. I'm going to put another piece down here. So any questions on how I did that? So you want them just butting up against each yep. other and not overlapping? You can overlap a little bit. 
it it kind of ends up that way but you don't want it way overlapped so i don't know can you zoom in to right here don uh, I'm, i am but i will zoom in a bit more yeah. just the space between my nails this is kind of what you want it to there look like now i have a little bit extra of the uh, um, stabilizer and batting but see this is this one's and that's that one's and this is perfect like this you don't want it like way over so the end is over here that's too much it's gonna show so it's just a little bit fiddly but you don't have to be perfect about it either uh, I have found it easier just to uh, tape it across. Can you pin it as well as tape? I would never <laughs> use pins. If you want to, I'm not going to recommend it, so don't quote me. Um, I would never use pins on my machine, but if that's your thing, then go for it. And see, I just had to push the metal, the middle part back just a bit to make it all flat and this is pretty good but it's not that hard to do it's it's you may think it's a little nerve-wracking to do it but it also you know doesn't have to be perfect either it's not it's not one of those perfect goal things oh my god it's off a little bit no that's okay it is uh you know a handmade kind of quilt so that's what you want so now just push everything down and I'm pretty happy with that and I think everything's gonna stay quite nicely and a little more tape so this is the one we just stitched and now we're attaching our stuff so I'm over taping because it's live and I don't want everything to fall apart <laughs> You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And I'm just going to roll this up just a little bit. And now we're going to take it back to the machine. Machine's up. Now, did you guys have any questions? Who could double-sided tape on the underside of the finished portion be problematic? Uh, double-sided tape. No, I don't think that would be a problem at all. It might be an easier solution. Just bop it around in a half circle around it. Um, I think it would look good. It's, it's not going to go anywhere. There's lots of ways of doing it. So, okay. Try not to panic. So, now we're going to do a zigzag stitch. And if you want your zigzag stitch to go slower... Um, you can slow down your machine. It's the only time I recommend it. Um, or you can hold, simply hold down the start button to go slow. And it will go slow. And again, I'm still using the same color. So it's going to do its tie-in. And it's going to do, I like to build in safety measures. This is just a little bit of a tack down. Go. Little little bit of a tack down. I just let it go. Just to kind of hold everything down. Don't put your fingers anywhere where you need to be. And now this is the zigzag stitches. And you can see where you are. The other thing with the zigzag stitches, there is a color change stop. So if you notice like one spot slipped and it's way over, you could possibly give it a little trim. But I'm not that picky about it. What do you think, Don? How cool is this? I kind of like it, yeah. So, everything pretty much stayed, guys. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, you can take take off the tape. It's not going to go anywhere. You don't have to. Um, 
but now I'll do it after. Now we're going to do our satin stitches. So you may want to give this a quick review as to what you think. Um, but remember the satin stitches are a little bit wider than the zigzag and it should cover everything up and we should be seamless and we have matched it up. It's cool, huh? You can't tell where we zigzagged, where we zigged or where we zagged. And it held it together. And I think this is a brilliant way of doing it. I'd like to do the apple core shape like this too. Yeah. Big apple core shape with uh, really good quilting design on it or something. So the log cabin, big, big log cabin clamshell quilt <laughs> is the same process. And I'm going to try to incorporate it in many more designs because uh, a lot of the quilting designs, the, the small is the English paper piecing, but the large is piecing together like, like a quilt. So you can get these clamshells in uh, 12 by 12 size. So they really do like the bigger size. Sarah says you get to make a large, pretty large quilt in no time. In no time. That looks like it's taken a long time to do it. Yeah, that's another. That's another one. I love that trick. That it, it, the wow factor we call it. It looks. Um, it looks more complicated than it is. Like anyone who looks at the grandmother's garden is going to go. Wow, that must have taken you forever. And you can say, oh yeah, I worked so hard <laughs> on it. And it's not hard. It's not, it looks hard, but it's not hard. And that's one of my goals when I'm making designs. Look, I think Cindy that did. King, Cindy King has a question. Okay, what's Cindy King's question? How would you add your back fabric? The back fabric? Yeah. Just add it. Just add it at the end I, there. I, I think she's inquiring because of the weird shape, but when you're done, it'll be... You could stitch in the ditch around the corners. You could do anything like that. Nice. You could add, because these are kind of squished flat, you could add some batting and then your background fabric. You could stitch in the ditch if you wanted, or we suggested quilt as you go, and then you don't have to worry about it. So quilt as you go would mean that you have the fabric on the back already. So that would work too. So either way, either or, I think if you stitched in the ditch, I think it would be easy to follow along the curves and just scallop it if you needed to do that. I don't always, but sometimes I do. Hopefully that answered your question. Isn't that easy though? How many of these do you think you could do in a day? When, when I saw you doing it, I was like, eh, that looks really hard to do. He was scared. I, I was scared. I was still scared right up until today. Yes. Um, but this, yeah, it is pretty simple to do. And it's, and it's big. So yeah. realistically, I could make a huge clamshell in my big, 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 big hoop, yeah. which is amazing because then you can do scenes in it and different things and no sewing. Just plan out how big you want. Yep. Do, do the top pieces as many as you need and make a whole boatload of clamshells. What I would do for this one is uh, just use the layer cake. It fits well enough and just side, go yeah. and just go split them up and just go. But doesn't that look good, guys? I'm pretty darn happy with that. And we're done. How do you quilt as you go with this design? I'm new to this procedure. Well, Misha came up with the... Back to the desk, Don. Misha came up with the, the idea. If you were to put pretty fabric on the back before you do the quilting and change your um, thread to match, your bobbin thread to match, then it'll look just as nice on the back than on the front. 
And the same with the uh, sewing, the satin stitch sewing. Nice. So it could be, I didn't design it for that, but it could be. So can you believe we did that in the hoop, guys? Attached in the hoop. Now, it seriously would not take you very long to do this. So pop it out. And now that piece is nicely filled in. And yes, we're going to cut off the batting because we don't, or the, uh, sorry, not the batting, You're camera on this. the stabilizer because we don't need it. Oh, tulip pink, beautiful scissors. Um, and you don't have to, you know, be precise with this part. We just want it out of our way. So when we're ready to hoop the next one, it's out of our way. We don't need it complicating our lives. Not at all. Whoops. Careful. Don't cut stuff. Jeez. I can cut this a little better. So, um, where you're putting it together. I would take a moment to cut it a bit closer, but I'm just hacking it right now. So we can turn it around and see how we did. And I think, I think we did a pretty good job. We did these, this is up a tiny bit, but it's not going to matter because we can, we can fix that part. What do you think, Don? Nicely done. Mm -hmm. Now we have all these ready for the, so the next one, the next row is going to be this one. So it's going to be a half clamshell, full, full half. So you, you know what this row is going to be. I'm not scared anymore. No, don't be scared. <laughs> so starting off, you know, from one side, go to the other. So starting off with the half clamshell and then you attach it here and then you're going to do a full clamshell and you're going to attach it here. You're going to put, bring all this over it and, uh, you know, tape it down and then same with the next one and then a half one so and they've it's, done. It's starting to look like fall. It, it's kind of fall. Yeah, it's kind of fall. But these wall hangings, if I keep going on it, wall hangings, um, I would just um, do the layer cake and just pull out the next one and do it. And it's really nice, too, because I didn't have to change threads. You can, of course, you can do each of these a different um, core, you know, color to go with it. I just wanted to experiment with the same color and see what it looked like. You could also do um, each every, each and every block, except for the half ones, you could do it all in a crazy stitch, which is nice. So if you guys have any questions on how to put this together, give it a try. It's really fun and it's a really, you know, professional, Look, look what we did today, and it didn't take very long. It's a perfect, finished, professional look, and I absolutely love it. I'm really happy with it. Is there a top of a clamshell to put at the bottom? Yes. To end it up? Yes, there's, it's a half top when you, and you have to end it on the correct row, so that's, that's also the placement, so yeah. It has to be on the row that we just did because then you just put three. So all the parts are there. All the pieces are there. All of the quilting pieces are there. And just make your plan and stitch out your, I was going to say gitch. <laughs> as many underwear pieces that you need, put them aside and then start and start attaching. So when you purchase the design, you're going to have everything you need to do an actual square quilt. Yeah. Even though it doesn't look square now, because it's kind of confusing that way. But Yeah, well, yeah, because I have just picture like a half circle here. It, it would be. Awesome. So, yeah, it would be. It's a nice little package. Super easy. Super easy and super fun. And it looks great. I may keep going on it and play around with some finishing ways like stitching in the ditch because I only have a few more to do 
uh, and then I can do the half circles and uh, see what we think. So yeah, try it guys, try it, try it, try it. If you have any questions, you can ask away in the OML Embroidery University Facebook group. We'd be happy to help out. Hopefully this is step-by-step -step enough for people you post your pictures and post pictures. We see. yeah we want to see we haven't been too naggy about seeing pictures but we want to see them i want to go on pinterest and see some of your amazing work so you know keep going keep going so don't forget to like this video share with anyone who you think would love to create this design and add Pink clamshells, Lynn. You want all shades of pink clamshells <laughs> and neon pink is the one color. We can do that. <laughs> Thanks everyone for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye everyone. Jesse's late. Good morning, Jesse.